Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Wednesday the 10th of March. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today. Trust that wherever you are, you're well. It's dr it's wet here in Northampton and it's been very windy overnight. So I trust that you're safe wherever you may be, as indeed I pray you're safe if you're here in Northampton. So let's bow our heads, shall we, at the beginning of our time of prayer and let's remember that the Lord is here and his spirit is with us. Some words from Psalm 78, beginning to read at verse 40. How often God's people rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. They tested God again and again and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not keep in mind his power all the day when he redeemed them from the foe, when he displayed his signs in Egypt and his miracles in the fields of Zoan. He turned their rivers to blood so they could not drink of their streams. He sent among them swarms of flies which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He gave their crops to the caterpillar and the fruit of their labour to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamores with frost. He gave over their cattle to the hail and their flocks to thunderbolts. He let loose on them his fierce anger, wrath, indignation and distress, a company of destroying angels. He made a path for his anger, but he did not spare them from death, but gave their lives over to the plague. He struck all the firstborn in Egypt, the first issue of their strength in the tents of Ham. Then he led out his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them in safety so they were not afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to his holy hill, to the mountain that his right hand had won. He drove out nations before them, he apportioned them for a possession and settled the tribes of Israel in their tents. Yet they tested the Most High God and rebelled against him. They did not observe his decrees, but turned away and were faithless like their ancestors. They twisted like a treacherous bow, for they provoked him to anger with their high places. They moved him to jealousy with their idols. When God heard, he was full of wrath, and he utterly rejected Israel. He abandoned his dwelling at Shiloh, the tent where he dwelt among mortals, and delivered his power to captivity, his glory to the hand of the foe. He gave his people to the sword and vented his wrath on his heritage. Fire devoured their young men and their girls had no marriage song. Their priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awoke, as from sleep, like a warrior shouting because of wine. He put his adversaries to rout. He put them to everlasting disgrace. He rejected the tent of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loves. He built his sanctuary like the high heavens, like the earth which he has founded for ever. He chose his servant David and took him from the sheepfolds. From tending the nursing ewes, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people Jacob, of Israel his inheritance. With upright heart he tended them and guided them with skilful hand. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray together now. O oh God our Father, your love is at work in all that you have made. Son of God, in your likeness we are made new. Holy Spirit, you touch our lives with hope. Receive our worship, claim us for your service, and set us free to honour you today. Holy God, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our fellow women and men, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have belittled your love and betrayed your trust. We are sorry, we are ashamed, we repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, 
Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of your light. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and so we continue to read through the Gospel according to John. And today we read in chapter 8, beginning to read at the 12th verse. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. Thanks be to God for his word. So this passage here, one of the famous I am sayings of Jesus, is focused around Jesus again revealing something of his character. I am the light of the world. What does light enable us to do? It brings clarity to our vision. It enables us to see uh, more clearly, but also enables us um, to uh, understand. It enables us uh, to appreciate. It uh, illumines our senses. It enables us to gain uh, accurate direction for our path many things that this of course uh, this basic function that so many of us take for granted uh, Jesus attributes himself as being the light of the world or the light for the world what does that mean it means that if we understand who Jesus is if we look at him if we have a sense of his priorities then everything else comes into sharper focus somebody once said if you want to know what god is like look at jesus and certainly as he is our light our life as he is our strength it's looking to him and gaining fresh courage from seeing what are the things uh, that make Jesus tick. But in order for us to do that, we need to have a gaze that's fixed upon Jesus. We need to have a desire uh, to look to Jesus. And so we pray again today that the Lord will help us to focus our eyes on him, that we may see in him light for the world, and we may see in him light for our way he brings everything into focus be it our relationships with other people be it our behavior be it our character our thinking 
our speaking, our loving, our giving, all things are brought into relief by looking to Jesus and learning from his character. What can you learn from Jesus today that will help you walk more closely in his path? <clears throat> words of the Apostles' Creed now that we will say together remind us of who God is for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's take up this immense privilege that we have of bringing our prayers and our concerns to the Lord now. So let us pray together. We begin today by praying for the created world, for those who rebuild where things have been destroyed. And we remember the work of environmentalists around the world and those who seek to restore and to renew. Remember particularly the Christian organization Arosha with its initiatives in education, both here and in various places around the world. May God bless them and keep their work safe and strong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for those who are persecuted, and particularly we continue to pray for those who are persecuted in the Middle East because of their faith. And remembering Christians in Iraq, we remember the campaign that they uh, initiated last year called Know Your Rights and Speak Up raising awareness of the challenges that Christians face in Iraq. We pray that the campaign would grab the attention of the authorities and leads to a reduction in violations against religious freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our country, for our economy, for businesses and for our workplaces. Lord, we pray for the economic well-being of our country. We remember before God those who face great uncertainty in their work and lift before God those who've lost their jobs and face an uncertain and difficult future. We pray for renewed commitments to our common life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Then we take a moment now to pray quietly for those we know and love and for anything that burdens us this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. To God the Father who first loved us and made us accepted in the beloved. To God the Son who loved us and washed us from our sins by his own blood. To God, the Holy Spirit, who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts, be all love and all glory for all time and eternity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you today, keep you safe 
A reminder that at 12 noon today, we have our thought, our word for the week, uh, which for the next few weeks is going to be brought to us by our assistant minister, Ruth Osborne, who's also one of our elders here. Until we meet again, goodbye and God bless you.